Hey guys, how's it going? So this was coming from popular request. I want to do a review of the entire Samsung Galaxy ecosystem because it is very rich and really good now. I feel like Samsung has always been nothing but bullet points where they say they're able to do something, but it's never as well thought out or as polished as some of the other systems out there. But I think over the years, Samsung has been getting better and better. And I think we're at the point right now where it might be worthwhile picking up Samsung products because of this ecosystem. I don't wanna waste any time, let's just get right into it. So first I wanna start talking about the Buds. These are the new Galaxy Buds Pro 3, and these are the best earbuds out there that's made by a smartphone company. And that includes the OnePlus Buds 3, the Nothing Ears, these are the 2024 models, the new Google Pixel Buds Pro 2, and even the AirPods Pro 2. And I would even say they're better than the Sony XM5s, which has kind of been like the gold standard for these inner type of designs. Without me getting into full details, at some point I will be doing a review of this, but earbuds are fantastic. By the way, I'm gonna have affiliate links down below for all of these products. So if you wanna help the channel out, or if you're just interested in getting this for yourself, but don't feel pressured though. If you want to buy it however you want, that's fine too. But just letting you know that that's down there. One awesome thing about these particular buds is it has a Samsung codec out there. And it's called SSC, which is Samsung Scalable Codec. And it allows lossless wireless and the best mic quality you can get out of any other Bluetooth headphone out there. It seems like it only it right now works for the Z Fold 6 and for the Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra which I will spend a little bit more time with later on. One of the easiest ways to tell is if it's fully supported is by going into the app and then going to sound quality and effects. And if you're able to go to advanced quality options, you should be able to turn on ultra high quality UHQ audio and super wideband speech. And once you do that, the microphone quality is incredibly good. Like just listen to this. I bet you've never heard a Bluetooth headphone sound this good before. So. Really impressive stuff, and this is only unique to Galaxy products because of Samsung's codec. But it does not work on the Galaxy Book. It's a limitation of Windows. Windows doesn't support that. They recently allowed Bluetooth LE, which this does support. But here's where things get more interesting. Once you connect it to a phone with your Samsung account, it automatically shows up everywhere, like your Samsung Smart TV or monitor, your Galaxy tablet, and your computer. Well, kind of. With the Galaxy Book 5, you have to connect it manually for the first time. Then from there on out, it'll automatically switch. And like I mentioned, it supports Bluetooth LE. So low latency and high quality. Have you ever tried connecting your Bluetooth headphones to your Windows laptop? It's usually not a great experience. Not only the song quality isn't as good, but there's a lot of lip sync issues. Not an issue with this ecosystem. Quick note though, make sure you update the software on your buds. There were some issues and bugs at first when it came to connecting and with Bluetooth LE. This is the latest software that I'm using. So make sure you are updated. You can update the Galaxy Buds on your Windows phone or tablet. And there's even a Windows app available too and allows the full controls of the earbuds too. So really handy stuff. But once you get everything set up though, you can start playing audio from all of your different Samsung devices and it'll automatically switch between all of them seamlessly. Like on the Windows device, it, it'll ask if you want to switch over or you want to reconnect to the Windows device. And a lot of this stuff, I didn't just test it out one time and was done with it. I've been using this entire ecosystem for well over a month now. So, I mean, let's just do a live demo right now. So right now I'll just play a YouTube video and it's playing through the earbuds itself. But let me just start playing something on Spotify on my Windows laptop and see if it automatically switches over. And there you go. I was just prompted to switch to the Galaxy Buds. My Spotify is now playing on my Windows laptop. So this is all done in real time. I just want to prove that it actually works. So then I decide that I want to move on to my phone. So let's just pull up YouTube music on my phone. And then if I press play, there you go. Now it automatically starts playing here. You probably noticed that I'm hitting pause first because that's what tells Samsung that you want to switch over to another device. And so then when I press play on the Windows, see the problem is the Windows doesn't always work. I guess, see the thing is it, it works sometimes, but not always. The thing is with, with, with Android to Android, the, the synchronization works well. Both with Windows, I just find myself having to connect again. And then from there, now it'll work. And then, yep, so now I'm getting the prompt here, so I'll just hit connect. 
And then, yes, I'm able to hear my music here, and I can see indication of what the battery case is and the buds itself. So now that I've done that, I should be able to hit pause and then hit and then hit play on the Z Fold 6. And there you go, it's playing on the Z Fold 6 again. So then now I'm back on the Z Tab 6, and I'll just try again on the phone. See, it didn't work there. It didn't work there either. So it's not always perfect, but I mean, it's an easy problem to fix. All I have to do on each one of them is just go to the app and then just hit connect. And then that usually just solves it for me. So there's still some polishing that needs to happen. I mentioned like, like a show that works a lot better when it's going from Android to Android, but when it just has to start working with Windows, I think that's when it gets a little bit more confused. But overall, great system. Oh, and if you have a Samsung TV or monitor, it pairs instantly to it as well. I don't remember pairing it in the past and the TV just found it. So, and in the settings, you can turn on 360 audio and head tracking, which the Galaxy Buds Pro 3 does support. And since these sound so good, they're perfect for watching movies. And the 360 audio and the head tracking is good. It's not distracting in the way like the AirPods Pro are with Dolby Atmos, but this good, does a good job of making it sound like I'm listening to a surround sound system. The only thing is though, there's some lag from Bluetooth. So I'm assuming that the Odyssey G8 32 inch 4K 240 Hertz monitor does not support Bluetooth LE or Samsung's scalable codec, which is weird because the TVs and monitors use Tizen, which is an in-house software built from the ground up by Samsung. Really strange that it's seemingly not supported. So as a result, there is some latency, but the lip sync issue isn't too bad. I was able to get used to it, but you know, fine. If Samsung's not supporting the, their own scalable codec on Tizen, they should at least be able to compensate by having some sort of auto lip sync delay compensation to adjust for it. I think this is just something that Samsung can work on in the future. All right, so next I wanna talk about multi-control. This allows you to control multiple Samsung devices with one. In this case, I chose to use a laptop. You open up multi-control in Windows, then once your Samsung devices are all signed into the same account, it'll automatically start finding them. They don't all need to be on Wi-Fi, but it's the easiest and the most efficient way to do it. Once they're found on the Windows app, you can arrange the different devices based on how your room is set up. Then literally just use the trackpad on the Galaxy Book and move the cursor to wherever your device is. And if your device is asleep, it will wake it up. So I don't know exactly why I would choose to do this on a phone like the Galaxy Z Fold 6, but it is cool to have it where it becomes much more useful is like when you're doing it on the Galaxy Tab. And also controlling different settings on my monitor or smart TV, and even just being able to navigate in different apps. See, it's not supported by every single app on Tizen, which is for their smart TVs or for their smart monitors, but that's up to app developers, not necessarily Samsung's fault, but I've been using it just to control different settings and to go to different inputs and stuff while just never really taking my hands off of my laptop, which is, this is the centerpiece of the entire system for me. I use my laptops a lot. I tell you, once you get this set up, there's been a lot of times when I even forget that this is technology. Everything just works seamlessly. And the really cool thing is too, is you can copy and paste between all three of these devices. It works with text and yes, it also works with images too. And apparently it works with videos as well too even though I didn't try that out so far has been my favorite feature and if you're wondering if things get a little bit confusing because in this case I have four different devices between the laptop the tablet the monitor and the phone sometimes I lose where the trackpad is if you just wiggle the trackpad it automatically goes back to Windows and you see like a little circle indicating that that's where the trackpad is so you can kind of find your bearing and then continue doing the craziness that this feature offers Really thoughtful and I'm glad that Samsung included that. What I really like about that is I get the best of both worlds. I have a full feature laptop and then whenever I want like the app experience or using Google or circle to search, etc., I have access to the tablet as well too, all without ever leaving the keyboard and trackpad area. Okay, so next is similar but different. This one's called second screen. It just allows you to use your Galaxy Tab as a second screen for Windows. So you just open up the second screen app on Windows, hit refresh so it can find your tablet, and then just click on your tablet and it'll connect. You'll see it enter second screen mode on your Galaxy Tab, and then that's it. Windows will treat it like an external monitor. 
And again, this is really impressive that Windows and Android are talking in such a seamless manner. Once you connect, you can adjust some settings in the second screen app. And if you click on allow input from connected tablet, then you can enable touchscreen on your Galaxy Tab. It's not perfect though, similar to when you use Sidecar on the iPad. The quality is compressed and it only supports 60 Hertz. So it's not ideal for content consumption or creation or even gaming. There's a tiny bit of latency, which makes it not suitable for gaming, but for regular productivity, getting work done, or just have needing a second screen to look at Excel spreadsheets, emails, or Microsoft Word, or even just a separate browser tab, it's more than adequate for. So next I wanna talk about is QuickShare, and this is god tier usefulness. There's so many times where I have something on my phone, but I need it on my laptop or vice versa. I usually just email it to myself, but now I can just open the quick share on Windows. It'll find your phone, then drag and drop whatever you want to send. It works every time and transfer speeds seem really fast as well too. And even if you're not in multi-connect, you can copy and paste between different devices too. And like I mentioned before, you can even copy and paste images and videos as well too. It's really well implemented here. And something else that's very useful too is the phone app and it's, an, and it's available on both the Galaxy Tab and on the Galaxy Book. So it's a really simple concept. It still uses your phone. And yes, it has full access to my contacts too, the same way it does on the phone. The only thing is though, because Windows doesn't have a way of single Google contacts, you're not able to get that on the Windows app. But you can just copy and paste numbers from Windows to the phone app and it'll just work. So what it does is it's doing a phone call here, but it's actually using my phone as the host device and it works identically on the tab. It's a little bit deeper on the Galaxy Tab itself because whenever you see the number, you can just click and call it. It'll actually pull up the app immediately for you. So it makes it a little bit more convenient, but the fact that, that this is here is great too. So for text messages, it's a little bit different. On Windows, you have to use a web-based system that's hosted by Google Messages, but on the tablet, it has its own app. It's pretty easy to set up. You just look at the emoji, Click on that. So then now I have full access to my messages. Good stuff. So the next thing I want to talk about is the your is the phone app. So really easy to set up. So then once you when you open up for the first time, it'll ask you your operating system. It'll generate a QR code. So just open up your camera, scan that QR code, and then you're pretty much in. And once you fully set up everything, there's a whole bunch of permissions and stuff you have to get to. You can also access all of your messages and your calls here. I don't want to show that because there's personal information there. You can access all of your photos, same thing. And these are all the apps I have installed on my phone. So I can even pull up the Samsung calculator and it... What it does is it just mirrors it from my phone. So your phone does need to be near you and it needs to be unlocked. So then I would have to open it. And then this is the Samsung calculator app. No big deal. But then here's something that's really cool that Windows doesn't support. And one of my favorite features about Google in general is having access to the Google feed. I can, I can scroll through my Google feed while still having full access to Windows. And it gets crazy. You can open up several apps simultaneously. I haven't really tested how many apps I can open at one time, but it seems to be a lot. So then next there's some simple stuff where you can use your Samsung phone as a remote and you can open different apps using the remote and stuff. So that's all cool. And if you're watching something on your TV, you can even stream it to your phone too. There's been a lot of times when I'm watching a show with people and if I have to get up to use the bathroom or to get a drink or something, instead of people having to pause it, I, I can just, I just usually now just take my phone with me and I'm watching it. So I'm not interrupting the entire flow. So all really useful stuff. So at the end of the day, I didn't show everything. I just kind of gave an idea of what's out there. There's still more, but I don't have all the time in the world to cover it. And honestly, some of them aren't as important to me as the few that I showcase here are. So at the end of the day, Samsung's got a full ecosystem. There are some bugs here and there. You do sometimes have to fiddle with different settings to get them to work. But for the most part though, it is fairly dependable and it all does work well enough to where I'm able to integrate this into my daily life, into my workflow and into my nine to five job. So been really enjoying this entire ecosystem. So the thing is though, overall, I would say I don't typically like ecosystems. I don't like to be boxed into something. That's why I'm trying really hard to get rid of all Apple products in my life. Because now that I have the phone, in a way requires me to use an Apple watch because there are certain features that only, a, that only an Apple smartwatch would do that they don't allow third-party smartwatches to use. And obviously same thing with Macs. 
all this stuff that I showed here, a lot of these are just Windows apps or they're available on any Android or Windows laptop too. So I've been using it across the board, but with like a MacBook, all that stuff only works with an iPhone and I don't like being boxed in. I like choosing the best products for my needs. So as much as I like the Samsung Galaxy Book, it's not the laptop I will be carrying around because it doesn't have a dedicated GPU. I can't video edit on it. I can't game it. I can't game on it. And as much as I like this laptop and I did do a full review on it, there's still some little polish issues that Samsung just really quite hasn't ironed out compared to some of the big boys out there like the Dells, the HPs, the Asus's, etc. I do like the Galaxy Tab though. This I might hold on to. The Galaxy Buds for sure since these are the best sounding earbuds that I have. And the Z Fold 6, it's, Samsung's not really for me. What I think my main phone is going to be the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. I love the camera, love the software, etc. So as a result, because I like having the best tech around me, I try really hard not to get boxed into an ecosystem. So as cool as a lot of this stuff is, I'd rather have the freedom to choose whatever product I want. So with that being said, this video took a lot of effort to put together, but I had a lot of fun doing it. It didn't really feel like work. So if you like this kind of stuff, just like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you are interested in any of the products that I'm showing here, I have links down below. It supports the channel. But other than that, let me know if you guys have any comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.